This week we're focusing on Yusen, China, where we saw some great shots and some fairly unusual shots in the World Open. But as usual, we're looking for the best shot. So to find it, we're going to be recreating everything as accurately as possible and then playing it in the fewest possible attempts. So where better to start than with tournament winner Judd Trump, using a lot of reverse right hand side to spin the cue ball down the table for a red in bulk. This allowed Judd to take a 4-2 lead in the match and he would eventually go on to win it 6-2. I've hit my first attempt fairly well, I just haven't quite got into the cue ball enough and ended up the wrong side of the brown. So it's just going to need a little bit more backspin and for me to get the white in the right position. Judd was a little bit lucky to nick the brown on the way through but it didn't make too much difference. I've taken roughly the same line here, just missed the flick on the brown but it's pretty good. Well that's a good start, but it means we're now onto this Neil Robertson shot where he's trying to level the match up for all in his semi-final match against Ding Jun Wee. And this pack split definitely helps as he ends up winning the frame. However, he doesn't win the match in the end. Ding ended up taking it in a deciding frame in a match that was mired by crowd noise and interference. I'm struggling to even pot the blue here and it keeps jumping out the pocket, so I've got to get the speed right and play the split. I finally got it and it's come off really well to be fair. Next we have Luca Brussel, who's finding a unique way to get in in his first frame against Oliver Brown. However, Brown put him in again to play this shot, and there doesn't seem to be any way Luca can miss this if he just hits one of the reds. Luca did end up losing the frame, so maybe it did end up working out for Oliver Brown in the end. However, he still lost the match. As Luca took it 5-2, and the reason I say there doesn't seem to be any way you can miss these shots is even if you hit it really badly like I did on my first attempt, you still end up potting a ball, as there's a few different ways this can happen, but I got it the same as Luca on my second attempt. On to the blue from Judd Trump in the final. Judd had pretty much won the match at this stage. He definitely won the frame, but this is still a brilliant cannon around two cushions to knock the pink out perfectly. This is gonna require a lot of cue power and a very accurate shot. As to start off with, I have to pot the blue, and that's a lot harder than it sounds, especially with the amount of speed I need to play the shot at. I'm playing this with a small trace of right hand side to try and spin the cue ball around the two cushions a little bit better, and I think this is required, but I think I'm also over allowing for it. So I'm now having to adjust for the fact that the cue ball's actually going a lot straighter than I think it is. And once I get the hang of this, I should start potting it. There we go. As you can see, I'm not quite getting enough angle around the table, so it's just going to need a slight trace more right-hand side, and that's made a big difference. All I'm doing is changing the amount of side spin by a millimeter or so, but that's what it's doing. And I finally got it right with this one, and I'm really happy with the cannon. Knocked it onto the wrong pocket, but it's still good. Ronnie has awkward queuing past the pink here, but despite this, he still manages to knock in this long red and make the clearance against Hossein Vafai to make it three frames all in their fourth round match. Ronnie narrowly lost this back and forth encounter 6-5 in the deciding frame, but this is still a good pot, so I was happy to get it on my first attempt even if I did miss the cannon on the blue. Zach Surtees. Uh, I'm not sure that's right, actually. Let's see. Zach Surety. It's just run out of position on the black while trying to make a 147. Despite this, he still manages to pot the black, get the cue ball on and off the bolt cushion, and back down in good enough position for the next red to make the pot. He eventually goes on to make the maximum break as well. I've got into this a little bit better than I thought I could, but the pace is more or less spot on.
Making use of this narrow gap, Lu Hon Yu pots the red cleanly through it and gets the cue ball back down the table in position on a colour. However, he didn't end up going on to win this frame or even the match and lost 5-2 to Ding Junhui. I wasn't expecting this one to be too difficult, but after my first couple of attempts, I was even struggling to get the red between the red and the black, which I didn't think was going to be too much of a challenge, because they're quite tight, but not massively so. However, I'm picking up the angle and I'm starting to get a little bit closer now. So if I can just get this right, and I have, I might be able to get on the brown. I can on the blue though. Next, it looked like Ding was out of position, but he wasn't, as he finds our first double of the day to take a four frames to three lead over Sean Murphy, which was significant because he'd take the next frame as well and win the match 5-3. I've got it straight away, but also slightly overscrewed it. And against that, we got Kyron Wilson. Judd thinks he's found a safe place for the cue ball here, but Kyron counters with a well-played double that gives him good position for the brown. However, he doesn't end up going on to win this frame or the match in the end. I'm not surprised I hit the red there because you have to get very close to it in order to make the double, and it's tough to judge striking down at the cue ball like this. So which of these is the cheekiest double? Cue the music. Ding shot one in the frame and both of these shots look good, so they're gonna receive four chilies each. However, I think Kyron's shots just looks a bit better, so he's this week's winner. Our next match is Judd Trump against Jackson Page, and Jackson's played a really good safety shot that's left Judd no real way back to bulk, forcing Judd into a long pot. Not only does Judd manage to get this, he surprisingly plays the red above the black, which is a strange choice. Mainly because if he missed it, it was very unlikely that the cue ball would run safe, so he just must have been really confident that he would snick this in. And as I've got it as well, we can quickly move on from it. A great opening red from Neil Robertson now in the third frame of the semi-final against home favourite Ding Jun Wee. Neil would end up winning this frame and taking the next one as well with a sizeable break, so this is a pretty significant shot. I just need to cue this one well and hopefully get the flick cannon on the blue. Now I have to point out that I've already done this once, got it after three attempts, but unfortunately forgot to start recording. So I've had to try again and got it in four. Under pressure against Judd Trump, Rory Thor runs himself a little bit out of position and has to make this excellent recovery shot, which helps him make a 67 frame winning break and allows him to get back to 3-2 behind. Which is good even though Judd went on to win by 5 frames to 2. What was also good is I got the pot on the red on my first attempt, but unfortunately cannon the blue. And I've been pretty close on both my second and third attempts, but just lost the angle a little bit. Trying to play with less backspin, but that's pretty good. Back to the Judd Trump Jackson Page match now, as Judd needs snookers but gets Jackson in a really nasty one. Not only putting him behind the green here, actually putting him behind the jaw of the corner pocket. So Jackson decides to play the swerve and he plays this really accurately. Not only does he hit the yellow, he hits it off the bolt cushion so he can avoid the brown. This was a tough shot. Slightly easier for me because I'm playing on a thicker cloth but still good to get it right away. Hossein Fafai has just won the fifth frame of his match against Ronnie O'Sullivan with a pot on the brown and secures it with this excellent long blue. He knocks this right into the heart of the pocket and it's going to be a tough one to recreate. But saying that, it's gone pretty well.
Back to the Judd Trump Jackson Page semi final, and Jackson's still attacking despite being 5 2 down. He makes a really good split on the Reds off the green here, but ends up losing the frame and therefore the match anyway. Despite this, he did really well to get through to the semi final, and no one really seems to be able to beat Judd Trump at the moment. I missed the pack with my first attempt, but got it with my second. Not perfectly, but I'm on an easy red here. Another Judd Trump shot now, and despite being nearly straight on the yellow, he manages to screw the cue ball around four cushions, ending up on the red on the top cushion. I'm not sure I'm going to have the cue power or the sheer speed of the table to be able to play this, but let's give it a go. All I can do is play it with backspin on right hand side. I haven't got into this one as well as I possibly could, but I've got a lot of spin on the cue ball, and that's got me nicely on the red. We've got another Jackson Page shot coming up next, right after we find Murillo from Balranium Calbario, which is there. Hopefully I pronounce that at least 90% right, but either way we've got this Jackson Page snooker to deal with next, and it's a good one. Judd Trump doesn't actually manage to escape from this, as it kept going back until Jackson got enough penalty points to leave Judd needing a snooker, effectively winning Jackson the frame. Theoretically this shot isn't that difficult, I've just got to stun behind the pink and black, but for whatever reason I'm just not getting into the cue ball well enough. I finally got it on my third attempt, but should have got this better and a lot quicker if you ask me. We need to break out the magic cue ball now because Luca Brussel pots this excellent long red to secure the frame, but after that pots this black and screws the cue ball back onto a red that's in the middle of the table, and I'm really going to have to hit this well even with the magic cue ball. The big difficulty is actually screwing back straight enough, and I got away with this one a little bit because I hit the side cushion, so that's okay. So to the results, I'm giving third place to this really tough swerve from Jackson Page that's difficult to play on these ultra-fine match cloths. There were so many different ways he could have fouled this that he did really well to get it right. Second place goes to Lu Hong Yu. This shot was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, and there was only the narrowest of gaps between the red and black. But obviously, first place goes to Judd Trump with a blue. Even though this is an exhibition shot, it's one of the best and hardest shots I've had to play of this year so far. So to find out more about previous tournaments you may not have seen, but mostly see the best shots from them, have a look at these two videos. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel, and visit the website. See you later!